Once upon a time, the McLaren F1 was the fastest car in the world. It was the supercar that all other supercars wanted to be, but couldn't. Despite its insane performance, its exterior was quite blocky though. How did that affect its aerodynamics? Let's find out. Immediately, it's clear that the front is very good. The angle of the hood and the front windshield split the oncoming flow without increasing its speed too much and without causing any flow separation. It just slices and dices straight through the air. The underbody is also really good and you can tell that it was designed with F1 in mind because of just how low to the ground it is and how well it keeps the flow attached all the way to the diffuser, which also then does a great job kicking the flow up to increase the downforce while reducing the wake size and hence drag. Coupled with the flow over the roof shooting down, the wake is really small and is very well behaved, especially for a supercar, which would usually feature a lot of small vortices everywhere. But here, there are only a few major vortices and very few smaller ones. Looking from above, it's impressive that despite having such a square back, the flow still sucks into the wake. That is partly because of just how well the flow stays attached around the front of the car and all the way down the sides, giving the rear clean flow to work with. And while many other supercars feature some strong wakes from the wheels, which can spoil the side flows, the McLaren's wheel flows are pretty good. From a little higher, it seems like the least aerodynamic thing on this car are the mirrors, because they seem to be the only thing in this region with substantial wakes. Even in the wake, at this height, it's tiny. As this plane sweeps through the car, the only major wake we can see is coming from the front wheel, with the jetting vortex from the wheel's contact patch being very prominent. Looking at the vortices, there are a few major ones in the wake which are really hard to get rid of and even modern street cars which are designed to have the lowest drag possible have these vortices still. Even with the few aggressive styling features on the side of the car, no vortices are created. That's a little surprising considering just how angled they are too. This is the drag and it's clear that there are only a few major contributors, the car's wake and the wheels and that's pretty much it. That's impressive. It's almost like this minimalist design made it hard for the F1 to produce a lot of drag. Wow, stick that in your pipe and smoke it. The drag coefficient comes in at just a 0.34, which is phenomenally good for a supercar, especially one from 30 years ago. Peace out, amigos.